So the madness of CES is over, but let's take a look at some of our favorite products that we saw this year. The Consumer Electronics Show is held every January in Las Vegas, and it's the biggest trade show of its kind on the planet. Almost every major manufacturer from all over the globe is in attendance, showing off everything from the latest TVs to health products and drones. And the fact it's held in and around Las Vegas means that the winter blues usually turn to electronic happiness for journalists and the industry at large. The beauty of the desert is that I could bury just about anything out here and it'll never be found again. But that's enough of that. Let's go back to CES and find out what's happening in terms of TV technology this year. 2015 is likely to be a very big year for TV with new tech, higher resolutions and wider colours all on the menu for just about every manufacturer. And with plasma no longer a viable prospect, AV enthusiasts will be looking not only at OLED TV, but also LED LCD TVs. This year, in the mid to higher price categories, they will offer 4K resolution with high dynamic range and wider colour gamuts. One of the main proponents of high dynamic range is Dolby, with a Dolby Vision technology. So Dolby Vision is a technology that enables a premium true to life entertainment experience by bringing together high dynamic range imaging along with uh, wide color gamut imaging to motion video. So what this means is that consumers in the future can enjoy entertainment of video content, feature films, broadcast and gaming in a, in a completely new dimension. So they, beyond going to more pixels with 4K, which is a great thing and higher frame rates, they can now Get, uh, enjoy the added benefit of high dynamic range and white color to really truly transform the entertainment experience for them in their living rooms. Samsung were also showing off their proprietary HDR system, with Hollywood films mastered in the new format showing on their 2015 models. The effect of HDR, better color gradation and the higher bit depth of the images on show was jaw-dropping. Finally, the AV enthusiast will be getting close to seeing in his home exactly the same colors and content as shown in the cinema. And it wasn't just the major TV names who were showing Dolby Vision and HDR content, as the Chinese brands were also keen to show off the latest tech on their screens. Although only Panasonic announced UHD Blu-ray at CES with an empty box demo product on show, the UHD Alliance and manufacturers are getting together to finalize the UHD Blu-ray specs with Dolby Vision, wider colors, and higher bit depth all included. So on Blu-ray, we're very um, happy to uh, announced that uh, Dolby Vision is, uh, has been uh, recognized as an optional format on the next generation Blu-ray uh, format that is uh, hit, uh, scheduled to hit the shelves also before the end of this year. And uh, the same Dolby Vision titles that we're grading today for over-the-top streaming uh, will then obviously be, uh, it will be possible to release those on the next generation Blu-ray disc. Moving back to plain old standard dynamic range and Rec. 709 colors, there were a mountain of LED LCD TVs on display this year from a number of manufacturers. Chief among the brands offering something better in terms of picture quality is Panasonic. This year, all their higher-end LED LCD TVs will have VA panels for better black levels. Uh, I think for next year, the, uh, the plan for us is to really uh, continue to focus on picture quality. Uh, I think more importantly, the consistency of picture quality. So I think, um, as I said, we had some great products in our range last year, AX800 in particular, um, but we also had some misses as well. And I think next year, um, we've really uh, uh, put some emphasis on bringing that consistency of picture quality all the way down the range. Um, for the first time next year, we're going to have a full VA lineup, which I think uh, for the UK is, uh, is fantastic news. Um, I think we, the, uh, the black level performance that we can get out of uh, a VA panel um, seems to be very well appreciated, particularly by your readers. So I'm sure that's going to come as very, uh, very welcome news. You know, if we can bring OLED to the market, uh, if we can bring a full VA lineup, we're going to have a mixture of curved, a mixture of flat. I think we're going to be ticking so many boxes next year. Um, that, yeah, it's, it's really exciting, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it starting. Will 2015 be the year the floodgates finally open for OLED TV? Let's find out. There may have been hundreds of LED LCD TVs, both flat and curved, HD and Ultra HD on show, but it was still LG who were the only game in town when it comes to OLED TV. They announced that all their 2015 OLED screens will be 4K Ultra HD with wider, if not super wide colors, increased brightness and better than black blacks. To us, OLED still looks like the future, even if HDR was the big buzzword of the show. And Andy Mackay from LG certainly thinks that's the case. There's so much talk around is the battleground a curved screen or a flat screen and was it 3D and other things. You know in the end it's the picture and I think that's the key differentiator in TV development. We believe OLED is the future of TV. It's picture 
perfect and I know that's <laughs> an issue very close to your heart so we believe in terms of colour and in terms of contrast pure black pure colours uh, and also in terms of clarity so an OLED screen is a thousand times faster in refresh rate than any LED screen in the world we believe OLED is the future of TV only from LG so those are the highlights as far as the TVs were concerned. What was available in terms of smart technology this year? Most manufacturers had revamped their smart TV platforms for CES, with Samsung introducing a new operating system to their 2015 TV ranges. Called Tizer, it looks quite similar to another Korean company's smart TV system layout and design, although there's no doubt that with all the latest catch-up services and premium apps available, Samsung has a very strong offering in 2015. LG also had their WebOS 2.0 upgraded smart platform on show, and in our CES video coverage, you'll find a full demo video where we go through the entire system with LG's Darren Peterson. We think they're on to another winner. Elsewhere, Panasonic was showing off their new Viera Smart TV system, which this time is based around the Firefox platform to interesting effect. Well, I don't you know flying cars or hoverboards in 2015, but there's still a lot of very interesting tech to see at CES. Immersive audio appears to be one area where we could see a format war in the coming months. DTS-X was only showing in a closed demo without any further details, but with Dolby Atmos already appearing on some Blu-ray discs and home receivers, could that be the format which comes out on top? Well, one, one way it differs obviously is the number of speakers. Um, you can deliver Dolby Atmos in the home with as little as seven speakers, uh, what we refer to as a 5.1 on the floor plus two overhead speakers. We're seeing Dolby Atmos implemented in 5.1.4 configurations, 7.1.4 configurations, Trend off, for example, is doing, is doing as many as 32 speakers. Um, so obviously, uh, in the home, we're going to have less speaker counts. Uh, what happens is uh, you take a cinematic mix. Um, our partners take that cinematic mix. They perform a near-field mix, conform it to the home environment, and that's what becomes the source content for Blu-ray disc or OTT streaming. Not to be outdone, Belgium-based Galaxy Studios also had their immersive audio format, Oro 3D, on show and being demoed. The format started life on higher-end custom installation products last year, but in 2015 it finally comes to the lower reaches of the home cinema market, initially with Denon and Marantz. The, our technology allows that we are using existing formats, and we can do that without losing any kind of audio quality, without any change of specs, so people can use their existing Blu-ray player how old he is, so uh, we deliver, let's say, that format in the existing formats, and with high-resolution high audio in each channel. Never mind Las Vegas, this year we spared no expense, we came to Mars. And when on Mars, we'll need 3D printers to make tools and possibly print our food, as well as our robots and flying drones to survey the new planet. And that very future was on show in abundance at CES this year. In terms of drones, there was everything from the fit in the palm of your hand size flying units to some bigger than a small European car with 4K cinema cameras attached. Obviously, drones are a growth market, with the prices now within the reach of independent filmmakers and the end consumer. We can't help but feel that some sensible legislation is going to have to become law soon, or our skies could be filled with unmanned flying objects. 3D printing is also moving fast as a new technology, and a large section of the new Eureka Park show area at CES was taken over by a multitude of companies, all showing off their latest printing wares. We particularly enjoy the 3D printed band instruments, and the possibility of printing out rare Star Wars toys from the 1970s. And that wraps it up for another year at the largest CE trade show on Earth. Stay tuned for our reviews of the upcoming TVs and tech at AV forums. In the meantime, we're going to let off some steam. Yeah.